These are the Card20 earbuds by Yobibo, a stemmed pair of truly wireless earbuds that are trying to stand out from the crowd by improving portability. I picked these up for about $70 American by backing their Kickstarter campaign a few months ago because I never understood why earbud manufacturers don't put more emphasis on making wireless earbud cases more pocketable. I often find myself leaving my earbuds, or at least their case, at home rather than jamming them in my pockets if I'm not taking a backpack when I leave the house. But with the Card20 earbuds, I can easily slide the case into my pocket without a crazy amount of bulge. Having said that, there are some trade-offs that were made in order to bring these to market, so let's get into it. In terms of build quality, I think Yobibo did an excellent job with the Card20 case. It's a super slim metal housing coming in at only half an inch thick that has a firm magnetic clasp and a sunroof style top cutout that reveals the earbud stems as well as three bright white LEDs that indicate the case's charge status. This cutout design shaves precious millimeters off the case thickness and while I could see it collecting some pocket lint or dirt over time, I haven't had any issues so far. The case charges with a USB type C input on the back that causes the cable to protrude perpendicular to the case back, but this creates a kickstand style effect, making it easy to monitor the charge status. Opening the case up, you get a plastic interior and a surprisingly loose earbud magnet, though the strength of the lid more than makes up for this. The earbuds themselves are quite tiny and mostly plastic, which is both a pro and a con, because while they're really light, weighing in at only three grams, the light plastic doesn't feel as high quality as some other earbuds, and you only get IPX4 water resistance, so you won't want to fully submerge them. Each earbud will last about 4 hours on a full charge, or about 20 hours with the case battery included, which is a little low and just okay really. The company also says that the earbuds are touch sensitive, but I think I would describe it more as tap sensitive, because while the controls are responsive, they require more than a light touch. In terms of controls, you can use either earbud independently in mono mode or together in stereo mode, which is nice, but you'll only have access to play pause and voice assistant summoning via double or triple taps in mono mode, and in stereo mode the controls are divided so that the left earbud controls play pause and voice assistant summoning, while the right earbud controls track skipping. At this price I would have really liked to have seen volume controls as well, but that's noticeably absent. Despite their small size, the Card20 earbuds managed to pack in a big 13mm driver paired with the Aptex codec. Overall, I'd say that the earbuds sound quite good, but not great. The noise floor or background static is low, and latency is average, good for YouTube and Netflix on a phone, but not for mobile gaming. They have a slightly warmer tone and a good amount of both bass and treble, but I found the clarity was lacking a little in the mids, which made the vocals sound a bit airy. It's important to mention here that the Card20 are a more open ear style of bud with a very flat design that sits just on the lip of your ear as opposed to AirPod style tips that project further into your canal or silicon tips that create a seal. This means that they don't isolate you from your surroundings at all and have to make up for this by being louder. I suspect this is why the bass and treble are boosted so much and why they don't sound quite as clear because I noticed that the speakers actually do sound quite clear if I press and hold them a little more into my ears. This is definitely a sacrifice that's been made to keep the earbuds slim, and one that has other consequences for fit as well. The ultra light construction coupled with the way the earbuds just hang on your ears makes them very comfortable to wear if you're out for a walk or just sitting at your desk, because they just kind of fade away. But unfortunately, it also makes them some of the least stable earbuds I've ever tried so I wouldn't recommend them for workouts or even for wearing around the house while you do chores if you have to bend over, because they may fall out. So keep that in mind. Finally, the Card20 earbuds utilize Qualcomm CVC 8.0 technology in an attempt to isolate your voice from the surroundings when on a call. Here's a sample of the microphone quality when I'm speaking in a quiet room. And again, here's what the microphone sounds like when there's some background sound being played on a nearby speaker. I think the mics do a pretty good job of picking up my voice, with only a little distortion, so I wouldn't worry about using them to answer a call if I had to. Overall, the Card20 earbuds have managed to pack a good amount of sound into a very thin and pocketable package, which is certainly an admirable feat, but they do sacrifice noise isolation and in-ear stability to do this. Having just finished their Kickstarter campaign, they're a little hard to come by, but you can get them from Alibaba for about 100 USD. Personally, I think they're really nice earbuds that address a big issue I have with portability, 
but there's lots of competition out there and I think that these would be easier to recommend if they were closer to $60, so keep an eye out for discounts. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.